Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I'd like you to pray just for yourself and just say, Lord, I want to renew this covenant with you. Not I, but Christ. Be seen, be known, be heard. We have come to Rehoboth and you are giving us room to be fruitful in the land. And we've heard you speak about the unlimitedness of what you want to do in our day. We have heard you, O oh God, and we have seen it beginning already. We have seen it breaking forth already. You spoke to us, say a little one will become like a thousand. A small one will become a nation. I, the Lord, I will hasten it, I will perform it in his time. Lord, we have seen you doing it now. It's difficult for our mouth to explain it. An unstoppable move of your spirit has begun. We see you moving into denominations, into cathedrals. We see you taking your word, O oh God, into lands and nations where we thought we could never be. We see you, O oh God, drawing men and instructing them to give attention to your word now. Our Father, we are asking one more time. We will not touch the glory. Can you tell God, I will not touch your glory. I will not share your glory. I will not take your glory. Lord, I am satisfied just to be a vessel, an unprofitable servant. I want to remain. Lord, by the working of your spirit, I will not touch your glory. Please pray. Please ask God to help us about that. Christ, only Christ. No idol ever falling. Christ, only Christ. No needless bustling around. We are not going to be making any sound that points to our sad life. Christ only Christ, no self-important bearing. Christ only Christ, no trace of I must be found. Lord, we want to hold you by your word to help us. In the name of Jesus, thou who helps a man not to fail, you will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thou, o Lord, who never will allow your name to be dragged into the mud. We put our hands in your hand again this night. Let it not be on the account of any of us that your glory will be withdrawn in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to ask that as we go on in this meeting, Give us a proper scope. 
Give us a proper understanding. Give us a proper sense of responsibility. Lord, may we not disappoint your purpose at a time like this. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are not being presumptuous. What you said you will do, you said. What I said to you before have taken place. Now I speak of what I'm going to do. New things I'm calling forth. Lord, we beg you that for each one of us, this Rehoboth must never, never finish in our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, please arise on our behalf. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I would like all of us, there are three passages that we have read over and over and over again in the course of our growth, in the course of our understanding of what God uh, wanted to do, which he had been speaking to us. I feel again tonight to bring you back to that passage. Now, but this evening, in order to put context to what is the scope what is the global scope of what God has brought us into? I would like us to take some few scriptures together again. We have read them. But as I kept praying, the Lord said, go back on them and highlight them again so that these brothers, these sisters, these bearers of this fire, these vessels that God has assembled to himself from nation to nation may have an understanding of what God is doing. And because it has gone beyond Boko, it has gone all over the country of Nigeria, it has gone beyond us, it is now in several nations of the earth, and even places that we never thought would be yielding to what we are saying, they are sitting in this meeting already. And we are not just talking about those who just carry their handset and either in their car or in their or they are just doing following Facebook and all of that. We are not talking of that. That one is a crowd of its own and we have no way of measuring them. We are talking about people that have gathered like this and they are doing visions retreat in Takum, in Jalingo, in Yola, in Yobe, in Gombe, everywhere where people are sitting and they are studying together with us some, they are interpreting it in the local languages of their own. It was important for us again to bring this matter out, trusting that the Holy Spirit will give you a sense of responsibility. And the first thing that was coming for me to share with you was the story that we have read over and over again in the book of Second Kings. Please follow me to Second Kings. Now somehow God had used that inst instruction to guide our hearts and to uh, insist on what we did over the years. There were several times I kept praying, Lord, do we need to do this again? And this passage will come back. But today, it is not the story that I really want to speak about. There's just one matter that God is raising in my spirit, which he had raised over time. But I feel that we need to be men and women who understand the responsibility of our Rehoboth. 
there is a reason why God is opening doors to you. There is a reason why God is giving us the open door that we are having, the invitation to ministries that we are having, the call of God on our life that has come, the, the, good, the good open heavens that is coming to our lives, there is a reason for it. But there is a responsibility to take. And I feel that we need to take that responsibility according to knowledge. Now, please go with me to that Second Kings. Uh, Second Kings, chapter thirteen. Second Kings, chapter thirteen. Now. I don't intend to go back onto the man Elisha because I was going to believe that he did his best. And he was concerned about not perishing the move of God in his own day. It looks to me as if Elisha was a man of capacity. He was a man of a large heart. He was a man who can anticipate something bigger. Why did I say that? As at the time that we are speaking, Elijah Hallelujah. If you remember, even up to the time that Jesus had come, everybody that wants to speak about a powerful prophet, whom do they refer to? It's Elijah. In fact, in the whole understanding of the scribe, they were looking forward that Elijah, the way he disappeared, that he was going to come again. Do you know that? Do you know that even when Jesus Christ came and he was describing the ministry of John the Baptist, because everybody believed that the highest prophet that has ever ministered was Elijah. And so they felt that there is an unfinished work that Elijah is going to come back to do. So they were always looking for him. So Jesus Christ had to say, look, of all that have been born of a woman, there was none. There was none. But John the Baptist was greater than them all. You remember that even on the month of transfiguration who are the two that came that appeared Elijah and Moses. So Moses represented the law. Elijah represented what? The prophet or prophecy. But now we have a man who was brought up by Elijah. And why everybody believed that Elijah was the highest, was the climax, this young man under Elijah, when Elijah was about to go and said, ask me anything you want. Because the Lord is going to take me from you today. You remember how Elisha asked and said, I want that the double portion of your spirit will follow me.
Do you know that we will meet some persons because they regard what you are doing is so serious. They will say, if only God can just give me 10% of your anointing, I will be all right. Have you heard people asking such a thing before? Eh? So we say, the way the anointing of God is on this man of God, if I can just be allowed just to shake hand with him, and when you meet, just shake hand with him like this, what did they do? They carried that hand. Then they will put it in their pocket. And they will not shake anybody again for some hours. They say, uh -uh. what I've collected, I don't want. Mm. Why do they do like that? Because they have a very, very small heart as regards what God is about to do. That's where I'm begging God to help us tonight. The reason is because a move of God has capacity to overrun the whole act and God will not even feel it. But it can only be according to what men on earth are willing to let God do. This is where we have to speak to ourselves very clearly. So when Elisha was going to request, say, I want double portion of your spirit. And you will remember that Elijah said, you have asked what? A hard thing, which even me cannot give you. You are asking something beyond me. Where will I get double portion of my spirit to give you? If to say you should, I should give you 20% uh, of my spirit, what will I do now? I can do that. Even when uh, uh, Moses complained that he cannot do the work of God alone, God said, give me 70 men. What will I do? I will take off a little of your spirit. And I will do what? I will give them. So all those 70, did they get anything more than Moses? No. And actually, they were not an increase to Moses. They were only distributed out of him. They just got some and, and there was nothing. None of them ask for anything serious. So this man said, I want double portion of your spirit. It must be something inside of him. There must be an enlargement that is telling him that whatever Elijah wants, I want double of it. Wherever Elijah went, I want to go twice of it. Whatever grace Elijah exercised, it can be much more. And Elijah said, well, if it is God, there is no limit with God. You can have it. But if it is me, I can't give you what I don't have. So he told him, he said, if you see me when I'm taking off, then you get it. If not, I'm sorry. Did he get it? Eh? Which means God is able. Please hear me now. God is what? Is able. Abundantly able to give to you far, far beyond what some of us have collected. Is God able to do that? Whatever is making you to think 
that we that are standing before you here we are already at the climax and that is the highest height that you could ever hope to go may god perish that thing in your spirit this evening in the name of jesus christ why did i want god to perish it it is because as you see me here we are only at the beginning i am not yet at the climax even though this beginning is looking so wonderful in your eyes it's looking so great in your eyes but i kept hearing god saying everything that you have done we become so small compared with what i wanted to do and have i not seen that over the years have i not seen that there was a point when we thought when we thought 19 gado hospital road was a big place when our actual tent was looking wonderful when it was looking like the biggest hall you could get and when we would just stand and be looking at that thing and all these my brothers brother moses and they all of them they were all laboring because we felt something is breaking forth and then the first meeting the thing was filled the second meeting we don't know what to do and as we are praying the lord said you see you are the one who thought what i want to do can be kept in this place and he booted us out and we came here and it was looking big of course as at that time was this not the biggest hall in boko town i'm asking you is it not the, was it not the biggest hall it was all the places that you put as the press now it was part of this thing and yet there's no space and in our mind those who do not know where we are going those who cannot see what god is talking about in their mind they are shouting the whole town has gone after them that's what they are shouting they were wanting to fight saying he's taking this he's taking that i remember just because we were doing a meeting at graduate hospital road and and vehicles were parked we crossed the other side vehicles were parked machine hire boys were finding great business because they were just running and i remember somebody was passing on the road and he was saying what are they doing here now they have closed the road i never imagined that we can close the road <laughs> are you understanding so that looked as a big thing that ah our ministry has closed the road so i'm asking you now what is that road that we are saying was closed and god kept saying don't limit them and we stood in this place this same place in 1998 and god brought us to that passage you have asked a hard thing and god said don't ask me for a small goal we were there and god said all that you have not seen is because you have not asked what you don't have is because you did not ask me for it so why is this night instruction very important why we have to go back it is because unless god gives you an understanding 
a largeness of heart to discover divine possibility that is far, far beyond where we are now. You may accept mediocrity. Hallelujah. You may accept what I call the best around mentality. Excuse me, please. What is the best around mentality? Who can quickly tell me the meaning of that? The best around mentality. Brad Dennis, please give Brad Dennis that mic. Because you need to understand. Call it the local champion mentality. All right. <laughs> the local champion mentality. God must deliver you from it. It will be a serious prayer because what God wants to do now, that local champion mentality, that best around mentality, heaven must take it away. So that we do not waste our Rehoboth. Very important. Very important. You know there are champions in, the, in your local clubs. When you take them now to the state competition, your own champion, who is your best, is coming 25th position. Will anybody mention your, the name of your school? But that's your own champion. We are not working on the best around so that our environment does not limit what God wants to do. The fact that even in our locality there are certain things they've never seen, that does not mark the climax of where we are going. Hallelujah. So, when Elijah said, ask anything, and the young man said, double portion. Even double portion as at that time was something nobody could contemplate. What can be more, what can be more than a man who locked up heavens for three and a half years, and there was no rain. What, what anointing can be more than that? What anointing can be more than someone who was feeding and got fed in by the ravens? What anointing can be much more than a man who stood up there and say, according to my word, there will be no rain. And heaven was shut up because of his own statement. And kings and the policemen, they went everywhere and they could do nothing. And the day that he needed to come and open the heavens, he walked in again. Ah. And Obadiah saw him say, ah. He said, Obadiah, come, come, come. Go and tell your master that I've come. And I'm going to show myself to him. Obadiah said, excuse me, sir. Have I offended you? <laughs> eh? You want to put me in trouble? Because where have they not looked for you all over the country? The price tag on your head is still there. And if I go now and I said, I have seen Elijah. And before I will come, the spirit of the Lord will do what? Will take you somewhere. So you see, Elijah had a reputation that even the common unbeliever in town, they knew that the spirit of the Lord used to move with him. Policemen came back. After searching, searching, they said, excuse me, nobody can arrest this man because the spirit of the Lord used to move him. In fact, when they give us a link that he's somewhere here, by the time we are getting there, 
we just see that the spirit has taken him. He's no more there. He said, so if I go now and I say I saw Elijah and that he's going to, he wants to appear to the king. And they say, okay, go and bring him. And the spirit takes me away. What will I do, sir? He said, don't worry. I'm going to show myself. So he went and met the king. He said, Elijah is here. He said, Elijah is here? Elijah is here? Elijah is here? He said, yes. All right. Hey, and he wants to see me? Yes. Cancel all protocols. I want to see him. So as Elijah was walking in, now I'm looking at such a height of anointing. That would have been a climax. And Elijah walked in. And the king said, Are you here, thou troubler of Israel? You know what he's saying? For three and a half years, none of us could sleep because of what you said. Because of what you said, all farmers are weeping. Because of what you said, there's no food. The trouble of history, are you here? And then look at that man of God. Bold. He said, I, you call me trouble of history? You, your mother, and your father's house. <laughs> you are the troubler of the people. And tomorrow, I want you now to call a meeting. Call the whole history. I want to talk to them. So who is in charge? <laughs> eh? He took over. He said, call them, call them, send for them and meeting with them. And make sure that all the prophets of bad and all those prophets of the groups, they are all in attendance. And we will gather on Mount Carmel. The king said, yes, sir. And everything was done. So if you are under such a man of God, will you not be satisfied even if you just got 20% of that anointing? Eh? Will you not go in about and say, you know, do you know Elijah? You know Prophet Elijah? I say, yes. You know I was the man that used to carry his bag. You like to do that when you are myopic. When you have no sense of understanding of divine possibility. When you think God only does something that finishes. When in your heart you are thinking that hey, Bragbile, they are doing something and let him not die, oh, let him not die, oh, because if he die now, everything will die. When you have that kind of narrow mentality, you cannot understand what to do with Rehoboth. And it is important. The reason why I need to do this tonight is because the dimension in which God wants to move, the only person that can reduce it are those of us that God is entrusting with what he wanted to do. So we have to pray. This thing must not become small because we make it small. Did you hear me? What did I say? It must not become small because I have made it small. And I'm speaking to several of you here tonight. I am trusting God that something will explode in your heart. And some of you are, you are too quiet for too long. Because you thought hollowness is equal to holiness. Because you think that narrowness is a manifestation of humility. Because you think that enlargement or divine largeness is devilish. So you imagine that to be small is to give glory to God. No. And I want to pray with you tonight that something will happen in your spirit because Rehoboth is here 
And God has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. We will come to conclude at that point before we pray. Now, so when that man opened his mouth and said double portion. To the point that Elijah, who could ask anything from God and he would get it, said what you have asked is a hard thing. And I remember that in 1998 we stood here and we said, ask God for a hard thing. Some of you are there. And thank God, the hard thing that some of you asked for, God did it. But you ask, it looked hard to you at that time. Because that is how much we understood. And I thank God that God has come again. May God help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, but what I'm talking about is not now about Elijah. And I'm not talking about Elisha. Because the ministry of Elisha manifested more than double of what Elijah did. Both in scope, in intensity, in impact, in authority, in every dimension. But when it was time for him to go, this story I want to read with you came up. And this story, I would have not been bothered about it, but the Spirit has not allowed me not to be bothered about it. And what I'm bothered about is the only little thing I want to share tonight. And I go away from there. Go to verse 14. Now Elisha was falling sick. Of his sickness. Whereof he died. And Joash. The king of Israel came down unto him. And wept over his face. And said. Oh my father. My father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. I don't have time to be explaining what that meant. But those of you that read your Bible, you know that that was exactly what Elisha said when he was grabbing the mantle of Elijah. Eh? So, number one, I have a sense of feeling that this Joash, this Joash, he may have read the methodology. He may have read the language. And he thought that let me just use the same language to collect the anointing. Excuse me, what we are talking about here is not language. It's not language. And it's not semantics. What God is saying to you now is not a slogan. And I want you to move away from slogan tonight. I want you to pray until something bursts forth in your spirit. I want you to go beyond the mere routine of mere repetition. I want you to I want God. Yes, I, I, I better begin to beg God. I want God to do something in you. Let the Lord enlarge something inside of you today. And from today, in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me, my brother? I want you to know that there is nothing you ask. That God will say is too big. You cannot carry a tanker, a water tanker, to the ocean. And then the ocean is saying, Ah, uh-uh. now you elu, you want to fetch me finish? Does ocean say like that? Abba, the tanker will collect. 
And the ocean will never feel that you have fetched anything. That's the God that we are talking about. That is the Father that has come to us. That is Him who has opened a river to our lives and to our land. But there's something that you must catch on this before we, we, we get into prayer. Now, what was that? Once the man said it, Elisha was not bothered about whether he said it correctly or not. That's not the issue now. And Elisha said to him, take the bow and arrows. And he took unto him the bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, put your hand upon the bow. And the man put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. I'm just looking at a great man of God who did not want the move to die with him. I'm just looking at a man of God who knew no matter the double portion on Elijah that he had operated in, there is still something much more for the younger generation to collect. I'm looking at a man of God who never thought it was going to be the final last in the purpose of God. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I'm looking at a man of God that will not hide any counsel of God from any life. I'm looking at a man of God he had been disappointed severally by uh, Gehazi. Do you remember Gehazi? Eh? And you see the cry of his heart when Gehazi went for, for, for the leper's uh, clothes. You remember what he said? The man of God said, Ah, uh, Gehazi, is it time is it time to collect olives yards? To collect clothes? Eh? Is it time to be collecting the droppings of the of lepers? Is it time? Is it time to look for change of raiment? Is it time to be talking about shoes? You know why was he talking to Gehazi like that? It is because I want to tell you, even when the anointing began to flow, even if you are just around Elisha, and you have not even got the anointing, you can get clothes. You can get dropouts. You can get good things. And I was telling my children the other day, I said, let the testimony of this revival not be that we have more cars. Let it not be, ah, since God began to move, I have plenty clothes. There will be clothes. There will be cars. There will be provisions. All of those things are coming. But they are not the matter. Let nobody come to measure the prosperity of this house by the houses. That is not the issue. I know for those who don't understand, they say, thank God this ministry has become big. And they would like to say, can you want to take a tour? And then you say, come and see. Come and see. This one. You say, eh? So you have this also. 
ah, so this has happened too. Oh, so this has happened. And all of that may become so much important to someone who does not know where we are going. And you begin to settle for such ordinary things. But you see, these things that you are talking about, they are not the promise. This is not what God was holding out to us that he wants us to collect. Oh my God. But all this, they will normally follow. And I'm praying that you will not be quickly settled with those kind of things. Oh, I didn't hear your amen. amen. I want you to know in your very eyes, all those things will become you know. But that's not what we came out of. To, 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 to. That's not the issue. And they will not be the issue. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible was showing me about this man of God. Say Gehazi. Ah! I gave you a rod to go and wake up a dead person. Nothing happened. And that did not, you didn't cry. You didn't cry. Me, I followed Elijah. He was a man that kings respected. But I never asked for his clothes. I pleaded for his double portion of his spirit. You, you are not crying for anything that I carry. Only what lepers brought that I rejected, that you are running after. Ah! And you went and you are talking to a leper with a beggarly spirit. You say, you know, <laughs> and when you left, some uh, visitors came and there was no food in the store. So my master said, I should quickly run after you. Look at that beggarly, beggarly spirit telling lies, exaggerating, exaggerating your need. When some of you want to exaggerate what is not there, say, hmm. Well, we thank God. You know, in peace house, in peace house, they don't pay us salary. They're just there. They're just there. And then one unbeliever and say, hey, that's what they're doing to you. <laughs> God punish them. <laughs> Where you are supposed to become something, somebody say God should punish us. And you say, Amen. <laughs> don't you know that you are entering into a problem? Gehazi was there to overemphasize what was not needed. Only to collect the sympathy offering of a leper. What do you want to do with it? Don't you want to follow people like us? Wouldn't you cry to God and say, God, what this brother believe got? That will make him to even reject land. And reject cars. Abba. Tewase was my witness. When one day. A governor. From another state came. And because we said. Don't, we, are, we are going to lodge you. We are feeding you. And we don't need anything from you. He had pursued money. Oh. And some people warned him. Say, ah, are you going to peace house? Don't disgrace yourself. Oh. 
They won't take anything from you. Just sit down there. And this man came and said, Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. They have warned me before. I said, you are not properly warned. <laughs> uh, we don't take such things now. Go back. The things that you have heard, go and do it in your state. We have come to that place. There's no problem. What is it that we came to collect? Don't use this robot to collect goats and chicken. It will be a waste of robots. What God elects you to collect that will affect your generation that will cause the purpose of God to prosper by your hand everywhere you are going is waiting for you. Don't be distracted. Don't preoccupy yourself with the peripheral issues. So when this man quickly came and said, the chariot of Israel and all of that, said, okay. He decided, okay. Since I know I am about going, I know I'm about to die. If you are here to collect, it's okay. Put your hand on the ball and take the arrows. And the man of God put his hand on the man's hand. That's what I call hands on discipleship. Hands on training. You are being told how to shoot. Now, what I'm dealing with is now in verse 17. And he said to the man, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot! And he shot. And he said, Now look at where I'm stopping. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Afek. Till thou have consumed them. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto, unto the king of Israel, strike or smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice. And he stayed. And the man of God was wrought with him. And he said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then as thou smitten Syria, till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. That's where I want us to stop. That's where the story is hooking my spirit. All of you, are you listening? Are we together? May God help us in the name of Jesus. What was the matter here? That this arrow, all of you please, this arrow, this arrow that you are taking is not a personal arrow. It's the arrow of God's deliverance. Please get this. It is the arrow of God's deliverance. It is the arrow of deliverance from Syria. And the man of God defined for him. What is the definition? He gave him this scope. He said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. The arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Afek. Till thou have consumed them. Did you see the word till? Did you see till? That is the word. 
That is the scope. If you did not put the word until you have consumed them, they would have said, well, you didn't tell him. You didn't give him the scope. You didn't give him understanding. But there was an understanding. Let's look at it again. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. As if God is handing over to you the arrow of the deliverance of God and the arrow of his deliverance, the deliverance of Israel from Syria. Please, please, are you with me now? If it was a personal arrow to, to fight a personal battle, you can use it. You can use it in your father's backyard. And when you have cleared Whatever is troubling your father's backyard, you can be a local champion. I say, thank God. The arrow that I collected, I dealt with everything. So the 50 by 100 of my father's plot, I collected it. But this arrow is the arrow of God's deliverance. This arrow is the arrow of deliverance of God's people from Syria until you have consumed them. Are you hearing me? This arrow that God is giving to us now, it is not, it is not peace house arrow. I don't know whether you are hearing me at all. If it is peace house arrow, you use it to build this house and begin to make a tour of your peace house. But this is not. This is the arrow of God's deliverance. This is the arrow of the deliverance of God's people from the hand of their enemy. And it is not to be operated for a little time. How long are we going to shoot this arrow? Until you have consumed them. Until you have made his enemies his full stool. Until everywhere, every space from Afek, from Afek, you know the way they were describing to him, say, from Afek, until where, please? Till you have consumed them. This is that arrow. So if that man understood, he was being given the arrow that would be in his hand. He would be shooting it. He would be smiting until everything Syria has been what? Consumed. And I'm begging God. We need to be clear as we were praying yesterday. We need to be clear to you. That what God wants to do now is not one small ministry. Amen. It is not one small organization. God is releasing an arrow for this end time. God is giving to us a room To do something in our generation. Until his enemies are made his fools too. And I know. 
God will do it. God will enlarge your heart. God will cause your spirit to see it. God, who is not intending that this will end again, God is not intending that this move, this revival, will stop until righteousness has been established on the face of the earth. Now let me pause. Let me pause because I'll come back on this. But let me show you the until, the until, the until that characterized this work. Before I will ask you to go and read what we have noted as the peculiar features. Now, I want you to look at several promises God gave us that came with the until. Isaiah 32. Please go quickly with me to Isaiah 32. Would you like to read from verse 15? I was wishing I can read your chapter, but uh, time will not allow me to do that as I have so much we need to share before we pray together. But look at verse 15. I'll read up to verse 20. What did it start with? Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness be what? A fruitful field. And the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever and my people shall do what shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places when it shall hail coming down on the forest and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow, that plants, that invest beside all waters, that send forth there the feet of the ox and the ass. We are not just asking for a little shower until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness becomes what? A fruitful field. Dry places will become a fruitful field. And until the fruitful field is counted for what? For a forest. The extent to which God wants to walk which we are beginning to see in his threshold now. In the heart of God, this move of God is going to overthrow wickedness. Now, I'm talking about it now because I don't want you to be narrow as regards what God is going to do with this arrow. I don't want you to be narrow-minded as regards where God is going to shoot this arrow to. I don't want you to allow our small environment to make you so environmental that you cannot see the scope that God is setting for your level of so that even when you begin to pray, when you begin to plead with God, you'll be praying with a dimension. 
you'll be asking God with a dimension of heart. You will not waste your opportunity. I know what I'm talking about. I told you yesterday about wasted prayers. Do you remember? Eh? And I said, don't do that again. What to collect with this Rehoboth? Don't go and ask for biscuits. I want God to deliver you from the mentality of what to eat. God is bringing us to a Rehoboth. It is the arrow of God's deliverance for nations. It is the arrow of God's deliverance for his people until you have consumed them. Until the desert had become a fruitful forest. Until the fruitful field has become a forest. Until righteousness begins to dwell in the land. Are you believing God for that? Or do you think it is impossible for God to give us the youth of this land? I'm asking a question. Are you thinking that God is not able to hand over to us all, all the traditional councils? And I'm not just talking of Tip Land. I'm not just talking of all the Benway. And we have just started to see it. But I'm talking of traditional councils of all different dominions all over Nigeria and jumping into other nations. Are you thinking it is impossible? Are you thinking that God is unable for this arrow until all those who sit in authority begin to bow eh? to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ? Is it impossible? But what was now a problem for me was that God is going to be giving you audience. Audience with the King of Kings. All of you, are you hearing me? God will be giving you audience with himself. And you'll be hearing in your heart. And God will say, for what do you make request? When we prayed here yesterday and we said, Lord, release unto us the spirit of prayer and the spirit of supplication. Because God said, I will cause the children of Israel to ask me to do it for them. So when God begins to open the door of prayer to you, and he gives you audience, audience with God, audience in the holies of holies, and they ask you, for what do you make requests? May you not waste your Rehoboth. May you not engage this open heaven to do something insignificant. And I'm charging all of you that are in this class now including all our leaders. Can you pray and say, Lord, you are giving us open door. You are giving us open heavens. God is opening door 
if you call a crusade, everybody wants to come. But because you are narrow-minded, you did not think your crusade should go first and say, we are in this land and we need to talk to the fathers of this land. And so you said, I need to see the district head, the clan head, all the heads, all of those ones, we need to have a meeting. And you go boldly and said, God has sent me to this land. And we felt that we need to begin with you. So I'm coming to greet you in the palace and to pray for you. And I will want you to please gather all your uh, chiefs. Because there's something God wants to give to this land. Will they gather? I'm asking a question. Will they? And if you bless them, will God answer? Eh? If any of them was sick and say, before we get into the into the market square, you are supposed to be the first partaker of what we have brought. Is there any see anybody sick in your in the palace? And then you see Baba say, ah, there's this boy, even me, myself. So okay, let's pray. Do you know God is going to honor your prayer? You have not done that before. But Rehoboth has come. You ever thought that this anointing is to gather boys? But this anointing that has come, God has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. In the name of Jesus. Now, but where is the problem here? The Bible said, and the young man, the young man, you know, I've left the word until because I wish you now will take your scriptures and begin to look at all the until that is in the promises God had made to us then you will see that you can't stop short of the scope that God is setting. Now, where the problem is that we are needing to call on God and pray about, what is it? And the Bible said, and the man of God was wrought with him. And he said, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times then as thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria thrice and Syria will take over. So let me ask you, that Syria was not completely consumed out of the territory that God wanted the children of Israel to occupy till today. Whose fault was it? Eh? Talk to me. It was that Joash. And what is my cry? And I want to tell you something quick. I don't want to spend time on it, but just to give you an understanding. And for you to please join me to pray. God has given us Open doors that has been unusual. God has opened unusual doors unto us. Permit me to give you one or two or three of that. It's an unusual door. When God said, I want you to bring together all the apex clergy of all the mainline denominations, God was saying that to me here. If he agreed me, I said, eh, did you know what you are asking me to do, sir? To bring archbishops, bishops, those people with their colors, and we cap on their head. 
No. no. Hmm. They will ask me, where is your collar? And you know, I argued that with God for several. I said, God, why don't you want me to also go and collect that thing? So that when they say reverend something, I will be able to say yes. God said, no, you don't need that. That's not what we bring them. When it is time, I will bring them. That was why I rested my case. Now God said, it is time to bring them. And I remember, I actually said, God, mm -mm. So you know what we did? We are doing ML out here, that particular year. I think it's 2001. And just reluctantly to try to quench my conscience and to prove to God that I told you they will not come. So I just did one small, small workshop for clergy. The clergy. We in time invite some of the clergy, some from Otupo and all of that. And where was their own burning? It was this my small guest house here, the parlor. Eight of them came. So when all others are doing big uh, workshop and all, I was going to meet with them. There are only eight sitting in that small parlor. And I was saying, God, you see. And then the people, one of them said, Brother Billy, we know God has told you to call us. I, I've not said it. They, God, God has told you to call us. Don't be afraid of us. Call us. We need to hear this thing that you are saying. As if the way they were interpreting the dreams in the camp of the Midianites for Gideon to hear. Are you understanding? That was what happened to me in that small room. I keep a lot of record of history in my head because I know where those things began. I said so. They said, call us. So I went back. I told the brother, I said, this thing. So I just wrote a letter. We started sending it to Archbishop, this bishop, that bishop, this uh, senior president, this president of convention, that, 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 that we sent. And God gave me what to do. He said, when they come, you respect them. They will come in their regalias. And you give them their honor. Good food. You will lodge them properly. So I called our brethren and said, this is what we are doing. It may be costly, but God said we should do it. That he is going to hand over the entire denominational churches into our hand. To my surprise, that first meeting, we did it at Parker Grave. Eh? That was where the meeting held. I thought they are not coming. We dressed the place and they were coming. Purple, white, with caps, with long uh, crosses, and they were coming. We have never done such meetings before. One other man that we asked to come. When he came and saw, he called me and I said, Billy, where did you get these people? We spent so much money in Abuja to invite. They can come. Some we just say, well, you we are busy. And we just say, said, how could you bring them to this bush? And they came. The man looked at me and said, this is nothing. For the hand of God on your life. Unusual doors. And this unusual doors is not for us. It's for what God wants to do in the nations. And from that, 
when the messages were preached, I told the media, please, this is not to be sold. <laughs> I see somebody overheard me. Say, Bragule, we use Episcopal authority to command you. <laughs> These messages should be, we need it. All our colleagues need it. So tell your people to bring it here. We are buying it before we leave here now. And you know they speak with authority. I can only say yes, sir. And God has honored his word like that. Unusual doors. That door, God has kept it. He has not closed it. It is now operating in different nations. The last clergy retreat that we did in October, several nations and report were that they never expected that this kind of thing will happen. Whole denominations. We are not talking of denomination of uh, one general vassal of, uh, of uh, two churches. We are talking of people that are over thousands of congregations. And they are saying this. We need it. Now, this arrow is not for us. It's not to promote peace house. It's for the body of Christ. Until Syria is consumed. Hallelujah. Until his enemies have been made his footstool. Until the desert had become a fruitful, a fruitful field, and a fruitful field had become a forest, and righteousness dwells in the forest. This is the arrow of God's deliverance. But when that man struck three times and stopped, heaven also stopped. You know, I was thinking that. Elijah will, have, Elijah will have said, ah, ah. Continue now. Continue now. But Elijah was so angry with him. He said, you see, why did you stop? It means you will strike Syria three times. And after that, Syria will take over again. You have wasted the arrow. That's my cry tonight. An arrow of deliverance has been released again to the body of Christ. And this is that arrow. Unusual doors. Unusual doors to theologians. It's not our door. It's God. Unusual door. Let me tell you, unusual, unusual doors. To the Ministry of Education. You see, there are things that God is leading us to do that people are wondering, how are you getting it? That state, state governments, not just Benue, Aquaibom State, Cross River State, other states, they are saying, we want to enter into collaboration with Peace House. To train our teachers. Whether they are Christians or Muslims or anything. Because it is an official training. All of them are there. I wish I have time to call some of the teachers who went to Aquaibo. And because there is no hall where you can gather all the teachers. So they did it at their senatorial levels. And we are dealing with thousands of teachers. And God told us, you will do it free of charge. You will feed all those teachers that are participating at least one meal a day. Ah, and you are going to give them resource materials. And you are bringing 
resource persons that are of the of quality and tell them it has no cost to them and one time a brethren went somewhere and somebody with a canker with a principal was not interested but when he, she came and and got what we were teaching got the word of god then he stood up and said she said if this is what all the churches are teaching nigeria will have changed i'm coming now i'm coming back unusual doors unusual doors because what we are talking about you thought that there's nothing you don't have anything to do with secular education but now they are bringing their teachers and they are saying can you train us and it's not just one small local government we are talking of whole states these were things that we were thinking it would take many years before what we are talking about will be anybody will give attention to it but god is giving us unusual doors unusual doors to the universities unusual doors to palaces unusual doors unusual i say it's unusual but what is the purpose of these unusual doors until the enemy until Syria have been consumed. Not until you have got some few members. Not until you have uh, started some few classes. Until everywhere, schools, universities, government houses, economic uh, organizations, until they have been brought on their knees. And do you know that we will live to see it? Yeah. We read of revivers where judiciaries were closed down because hearts of men have been melted. Those that have cases in court, they have gone to withdraw it. People are going about to rest. I was the one who stole your father's land and I cannot sleep again. Come and collect it. All those things happen because the arrow of deliverance was being shot. And God has come again. We are in a new season now. But I have an obligation that we must not make it small. We must not think little about it. We must not waste it. It must not be wasted in our hands in the name of Jesus. During the last seminar, we deliberately took time to study 2 Kings chapter 4. Do you remember? Perpetuating the move of God. All of you that attended the seminar, you remember that we spent time looking at that woman there was one pot of oil that is able to fill the whole land. Eh? But what does she need? She must need vessels. Say, go borrow vessels, borrow not a few. And as long as there are empty vessels, the oil cannot stop. The oil did not stay. It kept flowing. So let me ask you, who limited the quantity of oil that was produced? It was a woman. It was what she gathered that became the limit of what God was doing. This is where need for prayer. This is why I just feel that today I must share this with you. So that the Spirit of God can, can break your boundary. That God will make your heart boundless. That God 
we give you an insatiable hunger for what God has proposed to do in our day. Until, and I'm just begging God that it will not stop because of my own narrow heart. Some of you are now sitting in different nations. And what I'm talking to God about is that until your entire nation is drowned under this anointing, it will not stop. Vessels will never finish. We are not at the climax of it. Where did I say we are? We are the threshold of it. Everything that we have done so far, they will become completely small. Totally insignificant when you compare it with what God is going to do in the coming days. You will be a main witness. Already some of us are, even what we are seeing now, already confirms that it's already a big work. That's you. That's you. Me. What did I say it is? It is still at the beginning. And some of you are saying, is Brad Billy so ambitious? God knows I have no ambition for anything. But this is a responsibility. This arrow is not our own. So we can't use it to kill our rat. This arrow is not about me. It's not about you. It's not even about your highest dream. What God wants to do, but you see, it is because he wants to do it in us and through us. That's why we are crying. God, please, please, can you get me Amplified Bible to read the Amplified of Ephesians chapter 3 that uh, we prayed about before but I perceive we must pray it again. Who is having Amplified version to help me read? The Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 17, 18, 19 and 20. May he grant you out of the rich treasures of his glory yes to be strengthened and reinforced and reinforced with, with mighty power in the inner man amen by the holy spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality mm. may christ through your faith actually dwell settle down mm -hmm. abide mm -hmm. make his permanent home yes in your heart amen may you be rooted deep in, in love, love uh -huh. and founded securely on love yes that you may have the power the power and be strong to apprehend uh -huh. and grasp uh -huh. with all the sense god's devoted people yes the experience of that love Mm -hmm. What is the breadth, the breadth and length, the length and height, the height and depth of it, and the depth of it, that you may really come to know practically, practically through experience for yourselves, uh -huh. the love of Christ, yes, which far surpasses mere knowledge, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, yes, sir, that you may be filled through, through all your being. Uh -huh. Unto all the fullness of God. Unto all the fullness of God. May have the richest measure, measure mm -hmm. of the divine presence. Yes. And become a body. A body. Holy filled and flooded with God himself. Amen. Now. Now, now wait. Verse 20. You are now going to read that verse 20 carefully. Yes. Because I need the brethren to understand what we are begging God to do now. Now. Now to him. To him. Who, by in consequence of the action of his power, of his power that is at work within us. Now, this is where my prayer 
if this power, if it can work outside of us, are you hearing me? If this thing that God wants to do, he wants to do it outside us, and we will be passive onlooker, and we'll just be seeing the power of God moving everywhere, it will not have been a problem. But you see, God is saying, this power that God wants to operate, where is he going to work? It will be working within us, in you. Brother, go at it again. Now to him. Now to him. Yes. Who, by, in consequence of the action of his power, uh -huh. that is at work within us, that is at work within us, is able to carry out, to carry out his purpose, his purpose, and do, and do super abundantly super abundantly far over far over and above all that we dare ask god is able listen to do far over and above all that you dare ask there is nothing you ask that will be too big or too elaborate and God will say Kai. Mm -mm. reduce there will be nothing that you could ever ask say God let me be reading don't worry now I can read for you now to him who by and in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and is able to do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think is able to do infinitely beyond our highest prayers our highest desires, our highest thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Whatever you have asked is too small compared with what God is able to do. Are we together? Whatever you are asking, your highest dream, so you is high. To so God he say, is that all you are asking? Is that what you want? And how much will that push this arrow of deliverance? Why are you so soon satisfied? Why are you thinking that it's all right? Why do you can't Two million when you could have 20 million and if what God is doing now listen is because of his enemy that he must consume and he has to do it in me and through me how can I become a narrow valve for Josh, I tell you, he punished his generation. Did you hear me? What did he do to his generation? He punished them. When God gave him room to finish Syria, he stopped twice and he sat down. And those now are mobilized and they are taking over and they are oppressing the people up to today. Joash, with his narrowness, did not allow God to do it. We will pray. If only your eyes have opened to know that this arrow, this unusual room that God has made for me and you, 
Thank God for the brothers in Liberia. And I know they are, they are there. But God told us that you are going to reset to abandoned cities. We are going to rebuild entire nation of Liberia. And why are you thinking it's incredible? Listen, those of you from there. Did you know that the current president of that nation was a footballer? And people are wondering, how can this, this, this playboy for his president today? What does that show me? That if we labor now to raise young people with the issues and the virtues of the kingdom, who makes it incredible for us to place a disciple in the government house? Who says it is impossible that the palaces will be occupied by the disciples and their wives until Syria is finally consumed? What is making it incredible that whole universities can be held to ransom because of this arrow of God's deliverance? God has made a room for us. God is saying, now it's your turn. Ask me anything. I will do it. And as we listen to that message that God gave us two years behind, and he's saying there's no limit. There is no height that his hand will not pull down for us anything that is needed once we have agreed not to touch his glory. And in a short while, we already saw things happening beyond us. And I dare not begin to even tell you what God has done. Physical things, supplies that God has brought in different directions. When we used to gather here, it looked a big thing. But you see, every local government, people are gathering now. And one of the brothers says, sir, killing cows is no more a big story that we also are killing cows now in our small, small meetings. He said they went for a place and they just said, let's test MLR for the first time here. And they were saying, Tom, maybe we could just get some, uh, some ice fish and all of that. But Tom said, no! We saw them killing cows in, in Boko. If it's the same God that was giving them car in Boko, why not us here? Let's ask God for a cow. And in their own small, <laughs> somebody just walked down and brought money and said, God said you should bring this for the cow. And they jubilated. They said, hey, the same God that walked in Boko has come here now. That's God. I want to beg you. This arrow, let's quickly define it. Whose arrow is it? It's God's arrow. What is it meant for? It's the deliverance of his people for a little while. Until his enemy is consumed. So what it means to me, as I want to finally announce, is that this arrow it will not be withdrawn. It will not drop on the ground. Generations will carry it. We are at the beginning of it now. We pray that God will help us to live long, to guide it, to see it grow. But we will not be the climax of it. Did you hear what I said? The children that will rise out of this world will be greater than us. Yeah. Where we cannot go, they will go and bypass it. Yeah. 
but carrying this same arrow. Pursuing the enemy of Christ until they are finally consumed. All the nations of the earth, whatever their color and their language, this arrow will not drop until from Africa, Syria had been consumed. Until the enemy of Christ had been made his full stool. And can I now say, until he said, occupy until I come. How many of you believe that what heaven is beginning with us now is going to be on until the final trumpet? Some of you say a lazy amen. Yeah. I say, ah. God had been speaking about this. He had been guiding us. He had been teaching. He had been explaining. He had been breaking the barriers. He had taught us what evil the denominationalism had brought to his work. And he has said this arrow is going to melt denominations. And all those artificial boundaries will collapse. And the body of Christ everywhere, they will be so united to bear the glory of God. This arrow is extreme. And as it's going, it's broadening. It's getting deeper. And we prayed in December, it will grow purer. And that everywhere it goes, it will bring healing to the nations. And God told us that it is not ending here. It's not going to end with us. Thank God it started here. From under the sanctuary, but the destination of it is the ocean, the entire earth. And so I say, but brother, why are you saying like that? Why are you saying like that? Is it incredible? For what God will use to overrun the earth to begin here? All the things that have affected the whole world did it not begin somewhere? Why do you then think? That this land is not qualified to be a source of what God wants to do in the nations. Perish that thought from your heart. And join me tonight. Say, Lord, thank you for this arrow. It will not drop. And I will not drop out of it. I thought that's a prayer I wanted to pray. I won't drop out of it. This thing will carry me going. A time is coming when I will not even be able to know the number of souls and men and women that are drinking from this. And since it is not about us, not about our name, it's not about our organization, it's about him and his glory. So why not? Why not? So as you join me tonight to pray, will you rise and take charge of this arrow of God's deliverance and look at all the scope that God is setting for it, even in your nation, in your locality, in your local government, in your state, in your profession, and say to God, this arrow, it's not going to draw from my hand until the will of God has been accomplished on the face of the earth. May the Lord bless you. May the Spirit of God come upon you in a new way. May the Lord enlarge your heart. May your eyes of understanding be opened. May you receive reinforcement in your inner man. 
may you have capacity to grasp with all the other saints what is the length, what is the breadth, what is the height, what, was, what is the depth of what God is declaring in our midst. When I look at several moves that God had brought over time, and I saw how God guided them, and for some that derailed, and some that came to an abrupt end, and I said, Lord, did you intend it to stop? He said, no. Fire never says it is enough. But when there is nothing more for the fire to feed upon, definitely it will stop. It is not fire that says it's enough. It is that there are no more men. There are no more fuel for it. And I want to pray tonight, Lord. Enlarge my heart, O oh God. Help me to understand what the true body of the Lord is. That I may not slack anymore, nor withhold myself from the reason why I was born and born again. Did you conquer a village? Out of many villages. Everyone is saying, but where are the nine? Where are the others? As you will be joining me in prayer. Just for us to say, oh God. We will not be wasters of this arrow. We will not be the, the narrowing valve. That will stop this and make it small. I don't want to go to the other extreme or say, Lord, and if any of us is going to be a cog in it, let there be a force that will either push us forward or force such a person and let them go to heaven quickly rather than affect what God wants to do. But I think God is speaking good things about us. Say, it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. If you will rise with me in prayer, our brother will come and lead us to do that praying. I know God is, there's a labor in the spirit tonight. It is the labor that this that has come to us, this that heaven is releasing, it must not be cut short. It must not be applied unto killing rats and rabbits. It must not celebrate ordinary goods. It must not start pursuing peripheral things until Syria is consumed. Until its enemy has been made his first tool. Until Desert have become a fruitful field. And until the fruitful field have been made a forest. Until righteousness dwell in the forest. Until peace and the work of righteousness dominate the land. Until we are there. He said, blessed are those people who sow into the waters. Just stretch forth your hand and say, Lord, it won't drop in my hand. It won't drop in my hand. It will not become small in my eyes. Every form of expansion that you have made for it. Everything that you are saying concerning me inside this, enlarge my heart for it. Enlarge my heart for it, O oh God. Brother, it is not incredible that you are the one God has located in this now. Take away from me, O oh God. 
the local champion mentality. Open my eyes to see what heaven had made available. Please join us to ask God that that which you have done in our very eyes when Anna saw it when Simeon saw it they all said this great thing that the Lord has done for us God has visited his people they spoke about it beyond their little Jerusalem Please beg God tonight. That spirit of prayer, the audience God is giving you, it will not be used only to ask for something small. I know several sisters are standing here, brothers, you are standing here, and I know God is speaking something to your spirit. Something is about to blow. Some people have been asking, is that, is that, is that what you are doing? The answer to those questions are here. Enlarge my heart, O oh Lord, that I may rightly perceive. Help me to understand. What the true burden of the Lord is That I may not slack anymore Nor withhold myself from holy use Enlarge my heart Can you tell God, enlarge my heart Enlarge my heart, O God Who is saying to God I think I'm beginning to understand, but you need to enlarge my heart. You will need to turn me to another person entirely. It's not as if I haven't heard anything of this sort before, but my heart was not large enough to run with it. Today, oh God, the altar call I'm asking is change the capacity of my heart. Cause, oh God, that the capacity of what I can receive will not be a narrow expectation. I want you to change even the capacity of my prayers. To change the capacity of what I'm able to expect from heaven, what I'm able to step out and believe God for, change my capacity. Can you just quickly run to the altar because we want to pray. If it is the request of each and everyone, at least you will take a step to show that you are saying, Lord, count me. Count me as one of those who is saying I cannot remain like this. And I didn't hear all of this just to be entertained. Just to feel good about it. I want my life to be positioned for it. To be prepared for it. To be correctly enlarged in capacity to contain it. To bear it. To roll with it. Oh, I'm not happy to remain as narrow as I used to be. Change my heart. Enlarge this heart as we have sung over and over. This time, make it a reality. Make it the definition of me. Enlarge my heart in prayer. Enlarge my heart in my outreach. In my confrontation of lives for Jesus. I am too fearful. Too full of doubt. I am too full of hesitation. I am limiting you very often. Who is saying I'm not satisfied with my capacity? Enlarge it. Oh Lord, stretch my capacity. You are stepping out to tell God that. You are taking a step 
to say, Lord, I give you opportunity to change my dimensions. Lord, grant us capacity to bring forth this baby. Thank you for you will do this. For you don't bring to the birth and shut the womb. You can't be wicked to bring to the birth and shut the womb. This you will do to the praise of your glory. Oh Lord, this you will do. Thank you, Father. To you be glory forever and ever.